Evening guys, it's just a quick video tonight on uh, an ATL fuel cell that I've got in the, in the Seat here. I've had it for five years now, a um, 100 litre saver cell from ATL with a collector in it and a custom made top plate. So as you can see here, I've taken out the safety foam. Uh, I've previously inspected that, that all looked okay, no problems with it, uh, but with it being the end of the season, safety cell might need to go off to be recertified. Re I've taken all the safety foam out and I'm giving it a good inspection as well. But I just thought to show you the insides of an ATL fuel cell and you can see um, what's going on inside. So this is all the foam that's been removed from my cell. As you can see, there, the, there's little cutouts that ATL have put in. Uh, this actual piece is from over by the um, Fill a le fill level side of the uh, of the tank, just a, a cut out there, and th there's there's cutouts all over um, for the canister for the for the collector that's inside etc etc. And as you can see, there's there's, there's quite a lot. I'm surprised how much actually came out. So all of that came out of what is this hundred liter saver cell. I uh, don't think it's got the model number on it. But there's the, uh, the serial number and the, the date expires February this year, which is why it's all coming apart. So looking at the top here and the top plate, what we've got are the, the two fillers effectively with a uh, flapper valve underneath. So basically just the pressure of the fuel coming in opens that spring loaded flapper and uh, the fuel flows in. What you do have to be careful of is if you're putting your own foam into one of these tanks, is that you don't put the foam right up underneath that flap, otherwise it won't open. Uh, and then obviously we've got the, the 45 degree uh, filler necks that come off there. Uh, on this side we've got the FIA vent. Uh, it's got a probably a, a ball valve, check valve on the inside. We'll have a look at the underside shortly. That then vents out via a uh, braided hose to the underside of the car. Uh, wiring for the, the fuel pump, again you'll see the underside shortly, again all supplied by ATL. Uh, the return line and the feed line, the, uh, the stick is obviously coming apart there. Um, dash 6 fittings, all dash 6 fittings, uh, simple supply and return um, out to the, on my car it's a regulator and also a filter and that's where the return comes from before it heads up to the high pressure fuel pump. So once we lift the um, this top plate here, we'll start to see the, the plumbing underneath. If I can lift it out. There's the, uh, the, the valve, the, the breather valve there. The wiring loom comes through that um, bulkhead connector. And it's just push fittings on the underside um, for this convoluted tubing which runs off to a uh, another filter that's within the tank um, and also the return which runs into the um, the collector at the bottom that you can see there so what I'll do is I'll disconnect these uh, fuel lines move the top plate out of the way and get a torch and you can see better inside so these hoses are just uh, a push fitting Hopefully you can see that, that one just pops off. Which one's that? That's the return, so that'll just come straight out. Put that with the, um, the foam. So it's just a push on the clip there. As you push in, pull down and that then comes away. And uh, obviously the fuel pump's still connected. So moving to the inside of the tank, you can see the uh, three-way collector. Basically, we've got these guiding vanes um, that guide the fuel into the collector. Again, I'll show you more details. So I'll get the collector out shortly. Uh, I'm using a torch here, it's not ideal. That's the fuel pump down there, as you can see. That's held in with a Velcro strap. I'll show you the detail of that again once the collector comes out. And that's another filter, which I, I didn't even know about. Uh, so the pump pumps into there and then it, it comes out and feeds up to the top plate. So 
So we've undone the Velcro now for the fuel pump um, and the sock, which is also under a retra re retaining strap within this collector. So I'll just lift that out now. If it'll come. There we go. It's a Walbro GSS 340 or whatever the equivalent is these days. We can have a look at this filter. I've already had this out, this filter. So that's the underside of the sock on the filter. And as you can see, that is uh, it's got all debris on it, which looks like foam to me. So despite the foam looking like it was in good condition and it was checked, um, what was four races ago? And uh, that the foam was checked, it all looked okay. Obviously we didn't dig deep into the tank. As you can see, that foam is breaking down and it's all over the top of this filter, which is obviously doing a good job of protecting the pump. So um, it's five years, like I say, since this foam was installed. That's obviously too long, certainly too long for me. Um, and if you've got one of these tanks or a similar tank, definitely get it stripped down and check it. Make sure your foam isn't breaking down. So we've just unclipped the um, that clip there, which comes from the fuel pump. So, so the uh, pickup through the filter, through the fuel pump, through that hose down to this secondary filter in the tank, which to be honest, I didn't even know I had in there. Um, and then that hose feeds up to the top plate. So that's all disconnected. Can move the top plate away now and then get the collector out. Okay, so that's the collector out now and we can go around in that a bit more detail. So on the outside, it sits at the back. As, as you can see, we've uh, marked it up. So it sits like that within the tank at the rear. So under acceleration, the fuel moves to the back and those guiding vanes, the two of them there, effectively guide the fuel to these trap doors, which are sort of one-way trap doors. And um, as the fuel comes, it's just open, but obviously they won't open the other way. The theory being, or the, in practice, the fuel collects in this area, in this little box, so to speak. And the, where the fuel pump sits, it's got all the fuel ready to pump. Clever little design. Um, this uh, hole here on the top is for the return. So clearly the return just tops up um, what is effectively a swirl pot. But it's not really a swirl pot, is it? Um, like I say, the pump sits in there, in that Velcro strapping. Okay. And try and get a better angle on that. So that Velcro strap holds the fuel pump in place. It loops around that stainless steel buckle at the back. And then it's going to be quite tight, this one, if we can see it. Within there is another little strap. You can just see it. Will it focus? Will the phone focus on it? I'll try and put the torch on it, see if that helps. That might help. That little strap there is where the uh, the sock fits under. And it's just a, an extra way of locating the pump. Again, another trap door on this side. And that's the, the back side of the trap doors there. That's the one at the front, obviously. So, quite clever, simple design. Best things are always simple, aren't they? Um, and that's about that's about it for the. Uh, oh, there's the part number, CLAA02401. Yeah, so that's it for the the collector. It's expensive, but uh, I think worthwhile, especially if you want to run your fuel low or get the most out of your fuel tank. Unfortunately, they've got no part numbers. Or manufactured details on this uh, filter so if anyone knows what it is where it's from where I can get one with an ATL there uh, let me know in the comments below please okay so moving on to the the tank itself now um, as you can see there's still a little bit of fuel in there just in the corner 
Uh, that's the dip tube for the um, uh, filler level, fuel level, level sender. Let's call it a level sender, fuel filler, level <laughs> filler sender. Um, what's concerning though is the amount of debris that's in there from what what must be the uh, the foam that's broken down. You can just see all the yellow. That corner, that corner is terrible. And that is just all waiting to be sucked up or yeah yeah sucked over to the fuel pump and then it'll just block the um the filter which obviously is doing its job and the corner's the same which is just going to cause more problems so i was quite surprised at how bad that was in there and it goes to show that regular checking and inspection of this uh, the foam is imperative and good filtration obviously to protect the pump uh, and protect the engine I suppose at the end of the day so yeah that uh, that means uh, a load of new foam for me which will have to fit in there somehow try and match the cuttings So there you go, I hope that goes some way to explaining how these ATL saver cells work with the, the foam, the collector, the top plate um, and this extra filter didn't even know about. Clearly I'm going to have to replace all this yellow foam that's now behind me um, and look at getting the tank recertified if it needs it for an extra two years. Uh, but like I say, get that foam out at least every year and just because it looks in good condition when you're looking at it within the tank it could be depositing all kinds uh, of rubbish all over the bottom just waiting to cause you problems later on i think it caused those problems at donnington where the fuse went probably the the filter blocked caused more draw on the pump caused the fuse to go resulting in a dnf and none of us want that so there you go uh hope to catch you soon